Hi everyone, what's up? Joshua here from Alternative Brewing. And today we have the single dosing grinder trilogy comparison going on. As in front of me, we have the Niche Zero Grinder, the DF64, and the Eureka Oro single dosing grinder. So we'll be doing a head to head to head with these grinders. Now, to be brutally honest, I never thought I would choose convenience as a factor to brewing coffee. But in this scenario, when I have three really great grinders and they all make coffee taste amazing, that convenience of the Niche Zero just outweighs that of any of the other aspects of these grinders. But I think that there is more at play here. You see, each of these grinders really does have something that the other grinder doesn't. And I'm really putting it down to a trilogy theory. Hear me out here. We have the first movie. Now this is always going to be our favourite. We fell in love with the idea of single dosing at home and have truly lived that fantasy out through the Niche Zero for a number of years. Then came along the Turin, the Giotto or the DF64. And this brought the high-end single dosing with flat burrs to the home consumer, which was very welcomed. It does seem to shine most now within that fan fiction of aftermarket modifications. And then finally, the Eureka Oro was released and we all held our breaths. With two movies already out there doing well, there was high, high expectations on the Eureka. And it was always going to be a tough one to win over those diehard fans, but now we're all here. If I did have to keep any one of these grinders now, based off of my own heavily espresso-based daily consumptions, it would be the Niche Zero. And if I drank a lot of filter coffee, it would be the DF64. But let's now jump in and investigate that more now and see how I got there. Keeping in mind, I haven't picked out the best grinder, so to speak, but the one that suits me the best. And I hope this video honestly helps you decide which one might suit you the best too. The Eureka Oro SDG, its hopper is in two parts, the bellows and the wooden lid, and these both sit okay on top of the clear plastic hopper. You have to remove the lid to add your beans, then turn the grinder on from a small tiny switch from the bottom back right of the grinder body. Next, open up the hopper gate to let the beans fall down into the burr chamber and then close it again to stop any popcorning. Now with the DF64, it's in two parts again, with a slimmer bellows and a metal lid. Then turn the grinder on from a tiny push button found underneath the dosing cup. Pinch the bellows to remove the lid, at least that's the easiest way I find to do it. Next, add your beans straight down into the burr chamber and then place the lid back on and then hope for no popcorning. Now it doesn't seem like there's any happening, but we wouldn't know that unless we opened that lid again to have a look down inside. And when we do, there is a lot of popcorning occurring. With the Niche Zero, flip the clear lid open and then add your beans into the open hopper. Place the lid back down and then flick the switch on the side of the grinder to begin grinding. Now some popcorning does occur, but with the Niche Disc, which is standard on all niches now, this is kept to a minimum. With the Eureka SDG, it has a small dial at the front of the grinder, and then standing directly in front, you do have to bend down to see what setting you're on. Starting out at zero is the zero point, and the grinder comes calibrated this way from the manufacturer. Anywhere from two to five on the grind dial is your espresso range, and then beyond that, you do need to rotate this dial at least another two to three times around to get to any filter settings, save for a medium pour over or more. The catch here is you really don't have any indication of what rotation you're on. Was it two spins or was it three? So then you do have to keep dialing finer again until you hear that distant hum that must be you getting closer to those burrs touching and the zero point again. The DF64 has a nice big dial, facing up and tilted in plain view. There are big numbers and notches, and it's even marked out for espresso, mocha pot, and filter brewing ranges. It comes calibrated on zero, the sight though, for what setting you're on, is a little bit tricky to see and you have to bend down to line it up perfectly. However, there are some great 3D printed mods to sit around the hopper of the DF64 and this eliminates any inconvenience caused by not getting it lined up perfectly. With the Niche Zero, lift the lid and then turn the hopper around to change the grind. There are large numbers and dots, and it's also marked out with grinding ranges. The grind setting site is a tactile ball bearing you line up, and calibration can be done in seconds. Adjust the grinder as fine as it can go, and then move that grind setting ring independently to line it up with the calibration mark, and you're done. 
The grinds escape the chute cleanly out of the Eureka SDG, but they do leave a little bit of dust here and there around the chute when you use that bellows system, which you have to every time you grind to ensure that full dose is evacuated and it lives up to its low retention promises. The catch cup is a 58 millimeter stainless steel cup that holds a maximum of 55 grams. And this sits on top of a heavy metal disc to stop the dosing cup vibrating around. And then a magnetic wooden footing is placed under that. Now it doesn't come with a portafilter rest, but when adding a regular Eureka one in, that gap is still a little bit too far to avoid a mess, even when using a dosing ring. The DF64, similar to the Eureka, grinds out cleanly from the chute, but does get a little bit messy when you have to use that bellows to purge the full dose out. And it is set a little bit too far away from the chute to avoid this mess. There is, however, modifications available to adjust the position of this catch cup in order to get a better position and a cleaner workflow whilst grinding. And these should become standard with future shipments of the DF64. Now it uses a clear plastic 58 millimeter dosing cup holding a maximum of 50 grams. This remarkably, although plastic comes in nicely when dosing, as you can see when your grinds have settled within the filter basket after flipping and distribution. And the cradle also seconds as a universal porta filter rest. You do want to use a dosing ring to avoid any waste. With the Niche Zero, its chute is on a slightly greater vertical angle than the other grinders. And now it doesn't avoid being a touch messy too. That's honestly standard landscape for any coffee grinder. But the fact you're not having to use the bellows afterwards and still achieving a good evacuation of your dose means there is less dust being thrown around into the air after grinding out. The Catch Cup, a 58 mm stainless steel one, holds around 70 grams and has since been updated to remove any ridges on the inside of the cup that was causing grinds to get stuck on transfer. All right, I'm calling a team meeting here. I wanna bring it in, bring it in. And talk honestly here about the decibel ratings that we find on grinders these days. As I think we've gotten to a point almost and I'm happy to be completely wrong here, where grinders are as quiet as they're ever gonna get. It's around 60 decibels that I've recorded the quietest grinding. And if you check the World Health Organization, they're gonna say anything over 65 decibels can be harmful over an extended period of time. So bear that in mind. We're only grinding 18 or 20 grams of beans for much less than 30 seconds. Now I do realize it's not our own eardrums that we're concerned about when we do shop for a quiet grinder, as it is about waking the rest of the household in the wee wee hours of the morning. But for argument's sake, things like a vibration water pump on an espresso machine and then steaming your milk are louder and can last for much longer than a grinder does. So I feel like the grinder making all the noise in this scenario is a bit of a scapegoat. Look, grinders were loud at some point, but manufacturers are competitive now to this noise production. And I'm really curious though on your thoughts on how the grinder's noise production should be measured, especially here in the studio. Should it be calculated straight up decibel reading in front of the grinder? Or should I take my phone out into the next room and then measure the noise from there? Or does it really rely on how long the grinder also has to operate for? As this does add to the overall impact of the noise pollution. And there's a few ways to look at it. For today, I'm just going to be measuring the straight up decibel reading and then the length of time these grinders take to grind out a full dose.
Okay, so something probably not spoken often about is the flavor profile of a grinder. And when we say that, we are discussing how the grinder makes the coffee taste when we brew it. That's the simplest version of it anyway. And when we look deeper into this, it's everything from the shape and the geometry of the burrs, the way in which the beans feed in and out of the grinder, as well as the grind distribution that this creates, the RPM and the speed of the motor, and then the temperature that the grinder operates at during use, which is used more often in a cafe setting where the grinder is under constant load. But it doesn't go without saying, there is a large margin in the flavor profiles that are the Eureka and the DF64 with similar flat burrs versus that of the Niche's conical burr from Matza. And even that difference between that of the Eureka's stock 65 mil burr and the highly recommended SSP burr upgrade to the DF64, these are closer in flavor profiles than that of the Niche's conical burr. And this is where it gets a little bit gray, or for a better term, subjective for your preferences. Now I did say that the Niche has a different flavor profile using the conical burr than the Eureka or the DF64 have or could have using flat burrs. But overall, they all make coffee taste amazing. So if you are a true connoisseur of those transparent flavor notes of the coffee that you're brewing, then you may well wanna make that distinction between these differences. So largely, between dialing all of these grinders in to two beans, one was an espresso blend and the other a Central American single origin coffee, here are the flavor experiences I had. For the blend, the Eureka grinder gave the coffee a nice silky texture up front, along with a well-balanced acidity and a tangling sweetness. There was a light medium body and a rounded finish to the espresso, and it had two of three flavor notes that were expected in the coffee. Most pronounced were a brown sugar, tailing off to a dried fig sweetness. The DF64 had a soft texture on the palate up front with a good initial acidity that gave rise to a brown sugar sweetness, followed by an almost 70% dark chocolate creamy undertone. It did however have a very light body and a fast finish. The most pronounced flavour notes were of dark plum, brown sugar and molasses. Now the Niche Zero had a super velvety thick texture over the tongue, carrying a balanced acidity and a rich sweetness. There was a heavy body and a long lingering finish of 95% dark chocolate. The most pronounced flavor notes were of a light molasses and that 95% chocolate that tailed off to a brown sugar aftertaste. Now when it came to the Costa Rican coffee, the Eureka had a bright heightened acidity with a silky texture and a medium bittersweet blood orange body. The pronounced flavor note was of wild berry and this lingered softly within a clean finish. The DF64 had a much lighter body and a softer texture with a balanced acidity of blood orange harmonizing with the rich sweetness of wild berries. It had a clean, fast finish to it and those flavor notes of wild berry and blood orange, nice and transparent, sharing the spotlight between acidity and sweetness. The Niche brewed a heavy, creamy texture to the espresso and it followed with a bold, rich body of a round, balanced acidity and sweetness. It carried a strong, lingering toffee to the finish with pronounced flavor notes of toffee and a subtle, blood orange bitter aftertaste. So I would say there are no real surprises here in regards to the cut profiles that these grinders all produce, with the Niche Zero's conical burrs creating a very round, strong, and full-bodied espresso with balances of acidity and sweetness, but really capitalizing on the heavy texture of the coffee. And this adds to a long, lingering finish in the cup. Whereas the DF64, this seems to be on the lighter side of a cup profile, favoring more softer textures with a muted body and aftertaste, but really highlighting the brighter flavor notes of a coffee and then shining through with transparency. And the Eureka, well, this was the all-rounder here and it shared a good amount of texture with cleanliness but then produced some very bright, sweet coffees and still had enough body to produce a lingering, enjoyable aftertaste. <laughs> So for this I used a standard cupping, dialing in the grinders to a medium pour over grind of an average 550 to 600 microns and using a single origin Ethiopian coffee. I used three passes across each of the cups to see how they all developed. 
With the Eureka Oro, the first pass had a very nice soft peach with a low acidity up front, a nice silky texture that gave way to a juicy mouthfeel. On the second pass, it began to develop some more even with a complex mandarin sweet body that lingered through to a medium length finish. And then on that third pass, well, it didn't really develop all that much more, but did maintain a good juicy mouthfeel and that tasty mandarin sweet finish. With the DF64, the first pass had a mandarin sweetness just jump out at the cup at me. It was a very juicy flavor with a heightened acidity. Not a lot of texture and quite a clean, fast finish. The second pass was even more juicier than the first, though that acidity had balanced out some. And then when it did come to that third pass, well, it actually tasted like someone had put the brakes on all the flavor. Everything was a little bit more muted than all the previous passes. And I had expected there was going to be a development in the flavor, but it didn't really go that way. The Niche Zero's first pass, there was a dark honey sweetness in there with a very creamy texture and a nice balanced acidity up front. And there was a long lingering subtle baked peaches on the finish. The second pass, it brightened up a little bit and gave hints of mandarin, still with a nice strong body. That third pass though, everything rounded off a little bit, but overall, it seemed like the coffee got a little juicier as time went on. All right, so I won't be going about testing the retention of these grinders like I usually do. Weighing out 20 doses and then checking the average retention over those doses. Instead, I'm gonna go ahead now and pull each one of these grinders apart, brush out any grinds that are caught within the chamber and over the burrs, isolate that and then weigh that coffee out. And then we're gonna consider that the transitory retention of these grinders as a proportion to the amount of grounds that get regularly swapped in and out during grinding. Now, I don't believe any of these grinders are gonna be fantastic. There is gonna be some retention left within these grinders. And I think that's something that manufacturers could improve upon over and above just adding a bellows system. Now with the Eureka Oro, it is pretty straightforward to access the bird chamber. The only thing I would say is I do have difficulty removing the bottom burr set from the grinder. It usually takes some effort to be able to pull them out. The DF64, this is much easier to access and then pulling those burrs off is simple and easy. And with the Niche Zero, likewise, as easy as the DF64, possibly even easier, as well as the fact that you don't have to worry too much about aligning the burrs on the conical burr set as much as you might do with the flat burrs. All right, so for me, the niche has it over the rest, just in its simplicity of workflow. From dialing in to calibrating to cleaning and maintenance, it really makes light work of it all. And if you don't have to fuss or tinker with it, then that's fantastic. It's straightforward, it's super quiet and very user friendly. Flavor wise, I guess it's not as nuanced a flavor profile as the DF64 or the Eureka is, either in espresso or in filter as there is that large gap between these profiles. But I think if you're into bright, fruity, light roasted coffee, it's still going to work with the Niche Zero, as you won't immediately be brewing battery acid before you then spend a little bit of time dialing your coffee in, and it also adds depth to the coffee and works exceptionally well with milk-based drinks. So, espresso. But for full-time filter coffee, anything needing a coarser grind with higher uniformity grinds distribution, yeah, this is not that grinder for that. And it would be a little bit more of a murkier profile with not as much clarity, but good balance overall. Of course, there are other considerations when it does come to purchasing a Niche Zero, like price and availability, which do vary. 
and that's a little frustrating. When you can consider there are other grinders out there for half the price and still with pretty decent performance, but this is a niche zero. It is a market tested grinder that proves great results time and time again, and the moment it shows up on your door, you know what you're getting. Now the DF64 has a lot to offer. Straight out of the box, there are a few flaws, but these don't really stop it from brewing some superb tasting coffee, either for espresso or in filter. And it really does shine at doing both of them well, favoring brighter, more juicier flavors in coffee. And it works really well at preparing black coffee with transparent and clean cut profiles. But then it can really, really excel at this when you consider the modifications that are currently available to this grinder, like an anti-popping screen, a grind setting indicator, a modified anti-clumping screen, and a grinds cup adjuster. And then if you leverage off of the many aftermarket SSP burr sets that are available, whoo, this would unequivocally get you the best grinding performance out of any on this lineup. Luckily, the DS64 is a reasonably affordable grinder too, compared to the others. So if you do want to walk that line and purchase those extra modifications, changing out the burst set, aligning them, finding that zero point again, then it would be the DF64 that I get. But doing all of that is not everyone's gig. So I think there is another category here that we want to talk about, and that is that the Niche and the Eureka are both best out of the box. Now the Eureka Oro SDG, being the latest release between these three grinders, is understandably still seeing a phase of tweaking out the kinks, much like the Niche and the DF64 have already gone through. It is a little bit of a hindrance though that Eureka chose 65 mil burrs and not 64, as I do believe more coffee enthusiasts would look at the Eureka as a contender. So hopefully Eureka themselves, because I don't see SSP really doing it, bringing out further burr sets. But in saying that, I am quite happy with the flavor results that this current burr set provides. There is a good amount of balance with brightness and clarity, along with body and texture, but it, I guess it doesn't really shine at any one of those in particular and offers a little bit of everything. So I wouldn't say the grinder is remarkable in any specific way, and what it feels like is there is more workflow to it, so that user experience compared to the others is okay. It is Eureka's premium grinder of choice though, for home coffee enthusiasts looking to further explore great coffee. So I do feel like there needs to be a little bit more time on the market for everyone to accept the Eureka Oro SDG, and then hopefully, and despite the fact of those 65 mil burrs, there are people willing to pick this grinder up and then begin to work out those little things that the Niche and the DF64 have already gone through. So for now, I'm gonna close this case on the trilogy of single dosing grinders. That was exhausting. I would like to know your thoughts though and experiences on either one of these grinders and we can keep this conversation going in the comments section down below. Now, if you really enjoyed watching this video, smash that like button, hit the subscribe and bell notification and you can keep watching further videos that we bring out each week. Thanks for watching to the end of this video and we'll see you in the next one.